Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Rogers State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Drew Diamond, Executive Director of the Jewish Federation of Tulsa, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Drew, for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So the Jewish Federation in Tulsa, and, and you, you actually cover a, a very broad uh, region. Uh, talk about the Jewish community in Tulsa. Give us a, a sense of the scale of the Jewish community and its history. Well, the Jewish community has been in, in Oklahoma since well before statehood. We, uh, our presence in Tulsa uh, it, you know, uh, comes before Tulsa was a city. Uh, we're a small Jewish community by population. You know, Tulsa is now a metropolitan area of about a million people. Uh, we have about 1,800 Jews, men, women, children. So we're, we're probably one of the smallest minorities in, in, in the community. But over the years, uh, we, we're so fully engaged in the life of not only our own Jewish community, but, but the rest of the, uh, of the people of Tulsa, uh, that we've developed a, a footprint. Uh, we, we have a lovely campus uh, in, in South Tulsa, the Zaro campus. It's about 22 acres, uh, which encompasses the Federation has on that campus the Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art, uh, which is now a nationally accredited uh, uh, museum, and the, uh, the Zero Point Re Retirement Center, uh, the Mizell Jewish Day School, that's a pre-K through five school, and of course uh, our, our Schusterman Jewish Community Center, uh, which to give you an example of how this engagement works for us. I mean, we're, uh, our campus is a true community campus. Uh, the JCC has about a thousand members, of which uh, a little over 60 percent are not Jewish. With Jew the, the JCC is the Jewish Community Center. Jewish Community Center, but, but it's open and welcome to all, as is our school and, of course, our, our, and our, our services. Well, it's, it's similar in certain respects to the YW or YMCA's, right? Yeah, it, it, it has. Young men, Christian. Yeah, it has. It has there, there are certainly similarities right. in terms of, uh, of being, uh, we're all organizations that are not only open to all, but we're also a, a as, you know, we're, in, we're, we're a Jewish not-for-profit organization that is, you know, our, our mission is, is in terms is to, uh, is about Jewish culture and, and Jewish community engagement, uh, but we're also a charitable organization. And so we combine education and, and, and charity uh, and, and, and community engagement into, into our mission, into who we are as a people. And it's important to, to promulgate values. So whether one is native, and has the values and the culture of, of, uh, of a native society that goes back through history, or whether it is a Christian community or a Jewish community or a, a Muslim community or uh, a, a Buddhist community, it's very important to explore and share those values. So you, you're doing that through your museum. You're doing that through your education. You're doing that through your uh, daily philanthropic activities, aren't you? Yes, and in that openness, uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of re religious, uh, uh, religious engagement, uh, you know, Oklahoma is, you know, is by definition the Bible Belt. Well, that Bible Belt, quite frankly, includes lots of Bibles, <laughs> you know, yes. and uh, for example, we uh, are, we on any weekend you'll find you'll find Christian services that are held. Uh, we, we have some pastors that that come to our center and use our auditorium for services. Uh, we 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 have very close relationships with the Muslim communities, uh, and uh, down the road from us is Oral Roberts University, mm -hmm. uh, I, which we have historical. Uh, uh, close relationships, both academically and and in terms of uh, of the of the interreligious work we do, um, citywide, uh, Tulsa again again I think has has a sense of of, of ecumenical work. We have, 
we're part of uh, Tulsa Metropolitan Ministries, which represents a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of the uh, Tulsa church groups. And so, you know, through that platform and other, the other not-for-profits, Tulsa is a well-populated not-for-profit city. You're I mean, a hotbed of civil yeah, good. Yes, we it? are. And, uh, you know, we have our issues. Uh, you know, all, all cities have their issues. Uh, we're still struggling w with racial issues. We're, we're still struggling uh, with, with, with ec economic disparity issues and things. We, um, so the, the struggle goes on, but, but we're not struggling as much as some other places, I think, with each other about, about how we work on these issues. Well, it doesn't have to be a binary story, right. does it? Yes. So no. often we focus on the the negative often expressed in violence. Right. And there is so much going on that is very positive that is also about our differences, but our differences in a positive light are sharing our differences, sharing our foods, sharing our traditions, sharing our art, sharing our cultures, sharing our religious beliefs. I'm sure that there are, with, with the work that you do across different uh, ecumen ecumenical groups. I'm sure there are discussions in which the the people participating don't have identical religious beliefs or in religious interpretations, but they listen to each other, they learn from each other, they share, and it enriches their traditions as well. It's a it's a real accurate uh, observation, I think, Mark, because uh, you know there is there is um, among religious groups a a, a a fundamental that I think tracks all the way through. It's it's that core of love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, you know that that tracks through through most religions in, in so terms isn't of that a the sense. secret handshake, right? The secret right. handshake are those shared values. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter That's what correct. what uh, a particular uh, name one gives um, our God, but that whole idea of loving your neighbor as you love yourself of moral and ethical conduct, of respect, those kinds of things, those are the secret handshakes, uh, but they're not so secret, right, yeah, amongst they, all of us. It's easy for us to recognize it. It's easy for us to say it is challenging to live it. To live it. And that, and that is, you know, I found in, in my earlier life, uh, you know, both when I was in the Army and, and, and as a police officer in, in my policing life, you know, about uh, saying things like justice for all, saying things like we want to be peace officers, peacekeepers, peacemakers. Um, in community, uh, it is so much more difficult to make and keep the peace than it is to be angry, make war, to fight, to do violence. Violence is, is relatively easy to do. Yeah. Being peaceful is, is, is an every moment effort. In terms of the the um, the various facilities that you have and the and the work that you do, uh, could you just describe uh, the museum? Could you describe some of the social services work that you do, so that we get a sense of of the actual services that are that are produced by uh, your budget and by your people? Well, first of all, the, the Jewish Federation, uh, our our social services are are not you know. Are not just limited to to our Jewish community. Right. Jewish federations were set up in the late 1800s to serve uh, to serve Jewish immigrants who were impoverished. I mean, right. it, it particularly started in, in the East Coast in Boston and those places. We still have that mission, but we also we we also we also are, are part of the community service networks. Uh, we have, we have. If you Google the Zaro campus, you will see a large Star of David. Uh, we built that a few years ago as a community garden. It's actually a garden produces a ton and a half of fresh vegetables uh, for the for the food bank, uh, Northeast Oklahoma Food Bank. That came about because of our partnership with the food bank for years and. They expressed a need. Everybody has a lot of community gardens, but nobody has one specifically for the food bank. You know right. those community gardens. So we did that. So, so those kind of connections uh, uh, and and bringing in uh, bringing in people to to help 
train them and for us to go out and our staff and our community to be trained on community service helps. Part of that centerpiece is the museum. The Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art is in its 52nd year. Uh, the when, when we opened the museum on, on our campus, um, you know, you know, I didn't know 10 years ago when I took this position uh, with the Federation, I was on the board at the time and we were looking for an executive director. And uh, the joke is that uh, um, the fellow board member said, gee, why don't you do this, Drew, because you save us a lot of money and you're doing that. But the museum, uh, we, we've been able to get it nationally accredited and expand it. At its core are cultural, Jewish cultural exhibits, but we also have, and we're getting ready to, we're in the middle of expanding the, what will become the Sanditon Kaiser uh, Holocaust Center, mm -hmm. uh, which is, which is the, the Holocaust uh, educational core uh, of the community. Um, for example, we get uh, we get every eighth grader in Tulsa through the community as part of the Any Given Child program. Um, you know, Holocaust education, both understanding the history and, and being prepared for that prevention is part of that. But the the museum itself, educationally, in our in our galleries, other galleries who bring in temporary exhibits. We've had we've had Native American artists, you know. We've had Hispanic artists, African American artists, uh, and when we bring that work into our museum, it is to connect those cultures and their art to the Jewish culture and the Jewish art. That's exciting. We we talk a lot in in our in our Holocaust education in in our overall educational efforts about bystanders, uh, and that that what we really are looking for are upstanders, are people who will stand up for people in danger or people in need. Um, you know, interesting, uh, uh, the, the Memorial, National Memorial Museum in, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, Yad Vashem, uh, they've identified over the years a little over 27,000 Right, they call them righteous amongst the nations, people who risk their lives as individuals to rescue Jews during, during the Holocaust. Think about that number, a little over 20,000 people out of a European population of time of uh, about 450 million. Uh, you know, even if you double that number, it's still less than one sixth of one percent of people. So the question becomes, you know, uh, who are the upstanders and, and why, why are those that we're willing to risk for others so few? And we believe that, that through our educational efforts, uh, through our, our, our living by example efforts, uh, that, that hopefully you're creating an atmosphere in which people will choose to be an upstander. Let's spend the next years talking about this, but also not just talking, right. but acting on it, listening to the moral centers of our various religions, whether it's Judaism or Christianity or Islam. Let's, let's think about that moral core. Let's create organizations and responses that are centered in that morality and do what you are doing at the Jewish Federation in Tulsa. Drew Diamond, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Federation. And thank you so much for your insights. Oh, and thank you for asking us. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. Yeah.